It's so weird. These are rollers. I'm sure you're all familiar with what rollers are and how they're ridden, but if I asked if you thought a bike could balance and ride on rollers all on its own, what would be your answer? I'm sure everyone here can probably recite every single tip and trick there is to know about getting started riding with rollers. Start learning between a door frame or next to a wall so that you can balance yourself up and get started. Higher tire pressure, less resistance, easier to get started. Set the front roller slightly in front of the front axle, therefore the bike doesn't have a tendency to want to roll off of the front as you start riding. There are hundreds of good roller how-tos on here, better than I could ever dream of making. But what I'm interested in here is what is the science? How is it that someone has the ability to ride stably and balanced while in a stationary position without having any sort of support coming from the sides to keep you from falling over? So I looked it up, nothing. Just a bunch of the aforementioned roller how-tos that I already know exist. Okay, I've been assuming that my understanding of how a bicycle operates and is able to self-balance was complete and comprehensive. And if you were to ask me for an explanation, I would have provided something along the lines of, it's a combination of forward momentum and the conservation of angular momentum. With a clumsy added recollection of this experiment from middle school, a spinning wheel in your hand on a spinning chair. And for good measure to sound a little more science-y, throw in, it's all gyroscopic, you know? Well, as it turns out, the way a bike rides and is capable of balancing on its own remains a bit of an educated mystery, meaning there isn't just one concrete answer. There is, however, some accepted theories about combinations of variables that result in a stable riderless bike. One being frame geometry, more specifically, head tube angle, rake, and the resulting trail figure that those two create. The wheel touches the ground behind where the steering axis intersects with the ground. This distance is defined as the trail and results in the front wheel turning in the direction of a lean due to the force exerted on the wheel from the ground. Two is front end weight. The center of mass of the stem, bars, and front wheel are out past the steering axis, which also results in the front wheel turning in the direction of a lean. And three, to my delight with my fumbled explanation before I got deeper into this, the gyroscopic effect. When a wheel spins around an axis, Forces applied to that axis result 90 degrees from where the force was applied. Try watching this video from Smarter Every Day or look up how gyroscopes work. Either way, this results in the wheel wanting to turn towards the direction of a lean. What all three of these variables have in common is the tendency to turn into a lean, bringing the bike back up to a vertical, straightforward riding position. Think of it as the opposite of what happens when you counter steer to initiate a lean through a corner. Seemingly infinite combinations of these variables, some more than others, will result in a stable riderless bike when pushed with enough speed to move forward. The common denominator in all of my research is that all stability comes from the front end. No surprise, really. See, where I start to get confused is all these people who are trying this, they're always taking the bike and pushing it, giving it forward momentum. See, in my mind, I can rationalize, like I can, I can understand in some way whether or not it's right or wrong why a bike being pushed forward with, with momentum in a direction might wanna stay upright until it slows down and eventually falls. But the idea that all these variables can work in a stationary setting kind of breaks my brain a little bit. Putting all my doubts aside and studying the design of rollers with the presented variables in mind, the theories of stability definitely apply. The front roller is attached by a long elastic to a rear drive roller, allowing the rider to exploit and control the inherent self-stability of a bicycle. It's not uncommon to see a new roller rider drift from side to side of the drums while riding, obviously attempting to stay as centered as possible, but wobbling to success nonetheless. If a rider can turn and correct movements while riding on rollers the same way that they can on the road, there's not really much to say that a riderless bike can't also use the variables presented earlier 
to remain stable and balanced while riding alone on a set of rollers as well. So theory, theory's fun and all, but practice, that's entertainment. It's so weird. Whoa. Now, obviously, we only have so much drum width and wheel momentum to prove that this actually works. The wheel momentum falls apart pretty quickly because the rollers do shake, it slows the wheels right down, and you end up with the same phenomenon that you get with a slowing bike on the road. Corrections, 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 until it eventually wants to fall over. Or what happens more often is the corrections that the bike is doing for itself wanna actually go past the width of the drum, eventually allowing the front wheel or the rear wheel to actually come off of the drums, thus, stopping it. But the most fun part is it works nonetheless. So why does it work? Why is it that we're able to ride stationary in one position and still have balance not falling over? Well, the elastic that connects the front and rear roller together allow both of the wheels on the bike to rotate at the same speed. This replicates the same conditions that the wheels would be spinning at while on the road, allowing the front wheel the ability to track and do the work that it needs to do to keep the bike stable and upright. If we were to disconnect this elastic, no matter how hard you pedaled, the bike will fall over like there's no pedaling happening at all. Interestingly, but not surprisingly, some of my bikes that have different geometry than the fairly neutral geometry that's on the Schwinn Fastback, like one of the channel's beloved machines, the Rockhopper, that has a slightly slacker head tube angle, resulting in more trail than what the Schwinn has, exhibits different stability characteristics on the rollers. Ignoring the fact that it sounds like a fighter jet while it's on there, it seemed to like to make bigger sweeping corrections than the Schwinn did. While the steeper, twitchier Vigorelli actually have a bit of a hard time even getting it going because it wants to get away from me all the time. Though it seems I'm able to correct for some of the steering geometry by moving the front roller back and forth a little bit to contact the tire patch where it would prefer be for better handling. Though it definitely still exhibits some pretty fast steering characteristics making corrections fast enough that it kind of wants to like, basically the rollers are just the road rolled up into a drum that the contact patches of each tire sit on. If there's rotation for the front wheel to track and mess about in, it'll stay up. The way the bike is acting is actually no real different than the way it is on the road, except instead of covering actual distance and ground, it's just rotating distance. It's just sort of bizarre to see happen. Hey, if you liked this style of video, this format, these are the types of things that I'm kind of working on as I've become a full-time YouTuber for 2021. You can support by going through Patreon, the Spindat store, getting merch there, all of which go towards supporting this channel, keeping things viable, and keeping us going into the next years to come. And hey, if you order stickers, I'll probably draw you a picture and add it in there.